Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Love, protected, and safe, I hope. Today's sermon is on a great many of things, including hearing God clearly with your discernment, not pushing others to God or their path with Him, and obeying God's commands to you. Now let's dive into the past couple weeks of training with God and the scriptures concerning this. On 6-30-2023, my son came to me and said, Dad, I have to tell you, and you're not going to like it. And then he said, he said, but it's from God. Then he said, God told me that I should go live with Hayden, his friend that God had removed from his life several times before. God even gave me his mom's phone number that I didn't know, so I called it and it was her number. I asked her if I could live with them and she said yes. God told me that Dylan was hearing him, but not everything he said was from him. As I told Dylan, he was not going to live with anyone but me until he turns 18. He then told me he can't live with me anymore. When I asked him why, he told me that I always tell, yell at him. When he tells me something, God told him things. I always said it's from Satan, that he is depressed and not on track with God because I tell him what to do, and it shuts him down. I told him that I would talk with God about it, and if God said to let him go, I would. After we finished our conversation, I went outside to talk with God. I sat waiting patiently for God's will. But was not getting anything. So I stood up to walk back inside. Just before I came to the door, God told me to let Dylan stay there for two weeks. I went back in to tell Dylan what God commanded of me and let him know that he was not to ignore my calls, texts, or hang up on me, and he agreed. So we packed up his things he was going to take, and then we went to drop him off. The next two days were going to be the roughest I have had in quite a while as Satan came at me hard. He kept telling me that I wasn't getting Dylan back, that I should just give him up, that it would be easier to do God's work without him. These, of course, are all lies of Satan, but this was also training from God on how to hear him clearer, focus on him and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, also how to hold captive the evil spirits and thoughts to cast them to God and Jesus Christ for their eternal destruction. The previous two weeks had been leading up to this culmination. I had to be isolated again from everything to reach my next elevation with God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. My money had run out, we no longer had a tent to live in and nowhere to go, but I was relying on God to provide as he always does. God had assured me that I was not going to lose Dylan again, to rely on him and not my own understanding, to keep my faith and trust in him and Jesus Christ, and to keep obeying them and all will work out as they planned. Over the next day, I left Dylan alone unless God told me to call him or text him. When I called, he was indignant to me, kept hanging up on me, wouldn't call me back or answer my texts. God had me wait until late Saturday night to call him back, at which time God commanded me to tell Dylan that I would be coming to pick him up Sunday morning and that he would not be going back to live with them as he tried to tell me what I was and was not going to do. God was trying to show Dylan that he was throwing his, in his wants into God's will for his life because the trials are so hard. Because of this, he only heard what he wanted to hear, not what was being said by God. God allows this correction to drive you closer to him and his will for your life. I had just gone through this training from God the week prior and did a sermon concerning this. God taught me how to take the evil spirits and thoughts captive to deliver them to him and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior for their destruction, which gives me immediate peace every time. This is how to do this. Father, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I come to you to rebuke and cast this evil spirit and thought to you for its eternal destruction. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. I lay them at your feet. During this time, God was showing me that I was being too difficult on both my son and my mom concerning walking in God's will. Because I was trying to drag them both with me through sanctification on my path with God, I was only hearing what I wanted to hear from God about their paths with him. Due to this, I had been overly stern with them when it came to doing what I thought they should be doing for God. This caused strife, division, resentment, anger, outbursts towards each other as our spirits were rebelling against each other. The realization came to me Sunday morning from God as he was speaking through me to both Dylan and I concerning our separate paths with him. God told me to let them go to have faith and trust in Him and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, to pull them through on their perfect timing. That my job isn't to force the gospel on anyone or push them in their paths with them, rather to gently guide and nudge people to God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, to plant the seed and let God grow them, and to counsel those seeking guidance. 
2 Timothy 2, 24-26 The servant of the Lord must not participate in quarrels, but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, persevering peace, and he must be skilled in teaching, patient and tolerant when wronged. He must correct those who are in opposition with courtesy and gentleness, in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and be led to the knowledge of the truth, accurately understanding and welcoming it, and that they may come to their senses and escape from the trap of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. After we finished our conversation, both Dylan and I were back on track. We let go of what we thought we knew and relied on God alone for everything. We were now back on track with each other as well. Then God directed me to my friend's house to help him further seek God and to pull him through sobriety of alcohol dependence, which God had pulled me through. I had not seen my friend since God told me not to continue with him due to him not being ready for this help. This time would be different, though. Proverbs 4, 1-27 through Hear, O children, the instruction of the Father, and pay attention and be willing to learn, so that you may gain understanding and intelligent discernment, for I give you good doctrine. Do not turn away from my instruction. When I was a son with my father David, tender and the only son in the sight of my mother, Bathsheba, <coughs> he taught me and said to me, Let your heart hold fast my words, keep my commandments and live, get skillful in godly wisdom, acquire understanding, actively seek spiritual discernment, mature comprehension, and logical interpretation. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not turn away from her, wisdom, and she will guard and protect you. Love her and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is, get skillful in godly wisdom, it is preeminent. And with all your acquiring, get understanding, actively seek spiritual discernment, mature comprehension and logical interpretation. Prize wisdom and exalt her and she will exalt you. She will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a garland of grace. She will present you with a crown of beauty and glory. Hear, my son, and accept my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have instructed you in the way of skillful and godly wisdom. I have led you in upright paths. When you walk, your steps will not be impeded, for your path will be clear and open. And when you run, you will not stumble. Take hold of my instruction. Actively seek it, grip it firmly, and do not let go. Guard her, for she is your life. Do not enter the path of the wicked, and do not go the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For the wicked cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are deprived of sleep unless they make someone stumble and fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, but the path of the just, righteous, is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until it reaches its full strength and glory in the perfect day. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stumble. My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing and health to all their flesh. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful, lying, misleading mouth, and put devious lips far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead toward the path of moral courage, and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you toward the path of integrity. Consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet, and all your ways will not will be steadfast and sure. Do not turn away to the right nor to the left where evil may lurk. Turn your foot from the path of evil. After talking with him for an hour, he started getting jittery, anxious, and told, and told me, I think I need a shooter. I'm not going to make it through this. I told him, you don't need any alcohol. You need to pray to get through this. Then I explained how to do it. As we kept talking, he continued to vomit off and on. He asked me to take him to the ER to get some Ativan to calm him down. So he, my son, our dog, and I loaded up to go. As we were pulling out of his driveway, he said, Just take me to the park and I'll walk around. This usually helps get rid of it. As we got out of the car, he walked to the bathroom and vomited again. Then he asked me to take him to the ER. When we started to leave the park, he asked to go home to lay down. I told him we were already in the car, so it's better if we just go to get his nerves calm so he can make it through the next few days of the worst of the withdrawals. He agreed and said, actually, the doctor told me that because of how much I drink, I can't just quit or I could die. God told me to tell him he wasn't going to die, to lean on and rely on him alone and not his own understanding and to pray his way through this. He then stated, well, we're going to have to pull over a lot then so I can get out and walk. I said, whatever we have to do, we will do. We are not in any hurry. We will get there when we need to. I encouraged him the entire time, kept him in prayer, and after three stops, we made it to the ER. 
the evil spirit attached to him was trying everything it could to keep him in the very same destructive cycle to keep him from getting better and closer to God and his purpose for his life. I was not allowing this to happen though as God led me to this and through this in my life as well and God was leading me with my friend as well. When we arrived at KSB in Dixon, Illinois, I dropped him off at the ER entrance, then had a cigarette before going in to help him through. As we were sitting in the room, the nurse kept explaining to me the drugs they are they use are to keep the evil at bay, while looking at me saying it. The reason for this is because I had put them on blast for not only misdiagnosing me on several occasions in their attempt to keep me from God's purpose in my life. They are part of the evildoers in this world, set up to take God's children down. God had put a stop to their deceit in my life by delivering me legally from their false diagnosis. I kept my friend calm through this process by encouraging him, bringing up scriptures relating to the storm he was going through, and having him in prayer when Satan's negativity came creeping in. When I would go outside to check on my son and dog, the nurse and the doctor used these times to come in trying to make him worry to drag him away from God again. He told me they never gave give him anything for the anxiety to take home with him when they say they will, and that the doctor told him they were going to keep him overnight for observation. Both of these both of these times I said, well, they should be giving you medication to take home for this any time, and that the previous times they never kept him for observation. After each occurrence my response to and my response to them, they would end up coming in five to ten minutes after having changed their minds on what they told him they were going to do. They wrote him two prescriptions, one for anxiety and the other to reduce the nausea he was dealing with, then discharged him. This day and the following day he would vomit well over a hundred times due to the withdrawal. 1 Peter 5, 1 through 14 Therefore I strongly urge the elders among you, pastors, spiritual leaders of the church, as a fellow elder and as an eyewitness called to testify of the sufferings of Christ, as well as one who shares in the glory that is to be revealed, shepherd and guide and protect the flock of God among you, exercising oversight not not under compulsion but voluntarily according to the will of god and not motivated for shameful gain but with wholehearted enthusiasm not lording it over those assigned to your care do not be arrogant or overbearing but be examples of christian living to the flock set a pattern of integrity for your congregation and when the chief shepherd christ appears you will receive the conqueror's unfading crown of glory likewise you younger men of lesser rank and experience be subject to your elders Seek their counsel, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Tie on the servant's apron, for God is opposed to the proud, the disdainful, the presumptuous, and he defeats them, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, set aside self-righteous pride, so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Be sober, well-balanced, and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him, be firm in your faith against his attack, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who imparts his blessings and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory in Christ, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you, making what you making you what you ought to be. To him be dominion, power, authority, sovereignty forever and ever. Amen. By Sylvan Sylvanus, our faithful brother, as I consider him, I have written to you briefly to counsel and testify that this is the true grace, the undeserved favor of God. Stand firm in it. See, the church who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you greetings, and so does my son in the faith, Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. To all you who are in Christ, may there be peace. John 8.44 You are of your father the devil, and it is your will to practice the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks what is natural to him. For he is a liar and the father of lies and, ha lies and half truths. On our way back to his house, God told me to walk with his, talk with his parents about staying with them for two to three weeks and pay them two hundred dollars to do so, and to tell them that I am going to get him back better than he used to be. God told me they would not say no like they did just last December. I did as I was told, and they instantly agreed to let my son, dog, and I stay. 
His mom told me that she was going to the courthouse on 7-5-2023 to file to have him evicted before we left for the hospital. I asked her to hold on for two to three weeks until I got an apartment and that if he wanted to, he could come live with us. She agreed. The next 36 hours were going to be very difficult for my friend as he battled the withdrawals of addiction and the spiritual warfare that was raging within him. He is doing fantastic. He has a renewed fire within him and his parents have seen this and are trusting in him again as this has brought them all closer together. However, Satan knew this was coming and had brought around his ex-girlfriend again to drag him back away from God. She is also working with evildoers in this world knowingly. She comes back around every time he starts to get refocused on what he needs to do and pulls his focus directly onto her and her narcissistic ways. This inevitably backfires on him every time, which drives him back to drinking and despair. God told me not to say anything to him concerning this as he has to walk this part alone, just to just sit back and bring him low again to refocus him on God and Jesus Christ alone. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7. The Proverbs, truths obscurely expressed maxims of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, to know skillful and godly wisdom and instruction, to discern and comprehend the words of understanding and insight, to receive instruction in wise behavior and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, justice, and integrity, that prudence, good judgment, astute common sense may be given to the naive or inexperienced who are easily misled, and knowledge and discretion, intelligent discernment to the youth. The wise will hear and increase their learning, and the person of understanding will acquire wise counsel and the skill to steer his course wisely and lead others to the truth. To understand a proverb and a figure of speech or an enigma with its interpretation and the words of the wise and their riddles that require reflection, the reverent fear of the Lord, that is, worshiping him and regarding him as truly awesome, is the beginning and preeminent part of knowledge, its starting point and its essence. But arrogant fools despise skillful and godly wisdom and instruction and self-discipline. On 7-1-2023, God had me go get my mom and run her to do her errands. This would be further training for her in her path with God and to show me what the people in this world are doing now without believing in him and Jesus Christ. I looked north and saw a two-year-old girl with complete control over her parents. They were trying to get her into the cart, but she would not allow them to do anything. She yelled at them, walked away from them, while they just stood there, dumbfounded as to what they would do. This went on for 15 minutes before she allowed her dad to pick her up and carry her. Then I looked west, and I saw a mother with four little kids. She was screaming at them, cussing at them, calling them vile, degrading words, and threatening physical violence on them. I immediately prayed for these, for these children to be saved by Jesus Christ, as they were not going to be taught by their mother of, of God and Jesus Christ. Then God turned my attention to the east when I saw teenagers and younger wearing revealing clothing without regard to God or our Lord and Savior as they were glorifying the flesh. Then God directed me south as I turned off the gospel music I was blaring with my windows down. When I did, the car behind me was bumping the same song I had just turned off, showing me there are more like me in the world. This was to show me the end times that we are living in. How over this period of time, countries are glorifying their creation idolatrously before God. Division is everywhere and in all things. Satan is not hiding anymore and the majority of people are consumed with self over God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. During this time, God had me go pray for a clerk with my mom watching. The clerk, only 19, graciously accepted and when finished told me this. We need to stick together, especially during these end times. And thanked me for praying for her and I thanked her for allowing me to. This was to show my mom she needs to start seeking God's will for her life more than the things in this world. And then God had me teach her how to do this and how to discern his thoughts over Satan's. She would put this into practice immediately for her next steps in God's will for her life. This is how to seek God's will for your life in every decision. Father, what is your will for me right now? What is the next step you will for me to take? Then focus on the thoughts that come that come to you. If it's not building you up, moving you forward, it's not from God, so ask again. Focus on that step alone, not on the storm around you or on the future. Be consistent, always seeking God's will alone. Ask God if it's His will for you to do anything and not what you want to do. Ask Him. God, is it in your will for me to have this or do this? 
John 14, 16 through 31. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby, to be with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, and take to its heart, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you, and continually and will be with you, in you. I will not leave you as orphans, comfortless, bereaved, and helpless. I will come back to you. After a little while, the world no, will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you will also live. On that day, when that time comes, you will know for yourselves that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. The person who has my commandments and keeps them as the one who really loves me, and whoever really loves me will be my, loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. I will make myself real to him. Judas, not Iscariot, asked him, Lord, what has happened that you are going to reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered, If anyone really loves me, he will keep my word, teaching, and my Father will love him, and, I, and we will come to him and make our dwelling place with him. One who does not really love me does not keep my words, and the word teaching which you hear is not mine, but is the Father's who sent me. I have told you these things while I am still with you, but the Helper, Comforter, Advocate, Intercessor, Counselor, Strengthener, Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything that I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my perfect peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be afraid. Let my perfect peace calm you in every circumstance, and give you courage and strength for every challenge. You heard me tell you I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you really loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going back to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does take place, you may believe and have faith in me. I will not speak with you much longer, for the ruler of this world, Satan, is coming, and he has no claim on me, no power over me, nor anything that he can use against me. But so that the world may know, without any doubt, that I love the Father, I do exactly as the Father has commanded me, and act in full agreement with him. Get up, let us go from here. Over the next three days, God would be showing me that I am here to let my light shine before my friends, family, as they are all being attacked spiritually, just as everyone else is in this world, as God is shaking everything to the end. God showed me just what they are all dealing with to be able to gently guide them to salvation from God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But all must be brought low before accepting them into their lives as anyone who isn't will not stay with God and on his path for their eternal lives. The reason for this is people turn away from God and Jesus Christ when they get what they want and when things are going good for them. You must be driven to the point of giving up your life for their life for you. This is the reason my friend has to go through, the, through his ex again. As we do not learn what God is teaching us, he brings it back around to us until we get it right, if we get it right in time. So today his ex-girlfriend met with him this morning to get an AC that he got her for free. Then told him she wanted to come over to his house and hang out with him. God told me to be silent and let him find out for himself, so I did. She told him she'd be over at 12 p.m. Then, just as always, he tidied up, expectantly waiting for her, and, just as always, she came up with an excuse after excuse and not showing up. The reason for this is to get him to focus on only her, drive him crazy because of her narcissistic ways, stop him from doing what he needs to do, and back to drinking. He even mentioned this saying, yep, go figure, same crap again. I just agreed and let him ponder what he was going through yet again. Also during this night, my son was talking to me quite indignantly over the phone. He had previously mentioned to me that I do not listen to him like he wants me to. So I told him that I would correct my actions, but that he needed to do the same. He was at his friend's house, and I had called him to see how his day was, was and what he had done during that, this time away from me. He was short with me and wouldn't go into any detail of the day. He had also texted me, telling me not to keep texting him as he was talking with other people. God told me to remind him that when he and I are talking that he pays more attention to his phone and the people texting him than he does during our conversation. 2 Corinthians 6, 14-18 Do not be unequally bound together with unbelievers. Do not make mismatched alliances with them, inconsistent with your faith. 
Or what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Belial, Satan? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, just as God said, I will dwell among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. So come out from among unbelievers and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. 7-6-2023 Today God had me go to my mom's house to help her get the U-Haul ordered, and much to my surprise, getting a van I had attempted to get a month ago, only to be denied. This day, however, would be different, as God made the way where there was no way. Now mind you, I have talked about Coons dealership back in February, how they say they are a Christian-based company, and how they are not walking in the faith, rather they are walking by the money. They had denied me the loans due to my working for God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God told me not to do any posts or sermons on my own until he told me to resume. The reason for this is the evildoers think that by me not spreading the gospel, they have subdued me. This is not and will never be the case. So, to be able to acquire what God has for me, I had to play the fool in order to fool the fools. Before we left for the dealership, I received a call from a company that God told me to apply for. They set up an interview for me on Monday the 10th. While on the phone with God with her God had me tell her my friend that God sent me to help to get his life back on track was looking for work and has the same background as I I then asked her if I could bring him to the interview with me so she sent me a link to have him fill out the application then told me to have him call her to set up an interview time God is the way maker chain breaker the all in all in everything at all times 1 Corinthians 1 18 to 31 <clears throat> for the message of the cross is foolishness absurd and illogical to those who are perishing and spiritually dead because they reject it but to us who are being saved by God's grace it is the manifestation of the power of God for it is written and forever remains written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise the philosophy of the philosophers and the cleverness of the clever who do not know me I will nullify where is the wise man, philosopher? Where is the scribe, scholar? Where is the debater, logician, orator of this age? Has God not exposed the foolishness of this world's wisdom? For since the world, through all its earthly wisdom, failed to recognize God, God in his wisdom was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached regarding salvation to save those who believe in Christ and welcome him as Savior. For Jews demand signs attesting miracles and Greeks pursue worldly wisdom and philosophy. But we preach Christ crucified, a message which is to the Jews a stumbling block that provokes their opposition, and to the Gentiles foolishness, just utter nonsense. But to those who are called are the called, both Jews and Gentiles. Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is because the foolishness of God is not foolishness at all, and is wiser than men, far beyond human comprehension. And the weaknesses of God is stronger than man, far beyond the limits of human effort. Just look at your own calling, believers. Not many of you were considered wise according to human standards, not many powerful or influential, not many of high and noble birth. But God has selected for his purpose the foolish things of the world, to shame the wise, revealing their ignorance. And God has selected for his purpose the weak things of the world, to shame the things which are strong, revealing their frailty. God has selected for his purpose the insignificant base things of this world, and the things that are despised and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, so that he might reduce to nothing the things that are, so that no one may be able to boast in the presence of God. But it is from him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us freedom, wisdom from God, revealing his plan of salvation and righteousness, making us acceptable to God, and sanctification, making us holy and setting us apart, for God and redemption providing our ransom for the penalty for sin so then as it is written in scripture he who boasts and glorifies let him boast and glory in the Lord Psalms 107 10 through 16 some sat in darkness and deepest gloom imprisoned in iron chains of misery they rebelled against the words of God scorning the counsel of the Most High that is why he broke them with hard labor they fell and no one was there to help them 
Lord help, they cried in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He led them from the darkest and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For he broke down the prison gates of bronze. He cut apart their bars of iron. Galatians 5.1 It was for this freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery which you once removed. Matthew 7.15-23 Beware of the false prophets, teachers who come to you, dressed as sheep, appearing gentle and innocent, but inwardly, inwardly are ravenous wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them, that is, by their contrived doctrine and self-focus. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or fig, figs from thistles? Even so, every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the unhealthy tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruit you will recognize them as false prophets. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and driven out demons in your name, and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you are banished from my presence, you who act wickedly, disregarding my commands. 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 21 All who are under the yoke as bondservants, slaves, are to regard their own masters as worthy of honor and respect, so that the name of God and the teaching about him will not be spoken against. Those who have believing masters are not to be dis disrespectful towards them, because they are brothers in Christ. But they should serve them even better, because those who benefit from their kindly service are believers and beloved. Teach and urge these duties and principles. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine and teaching with which is in agreement with godliness, personal integrity, upright behavior, he is conceited and woefully ignorant, understanding nothing. He has a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, which produces envy, quarrels, verbal abuse, evil suspicions, and perpetual friction between men who are corrupted in mind and deprived of the truth, who think that godliness is a source of profit, a lucrative money-making business, withdraw from them. But godliness actually is a source of great gain when accompanied by contentment, that contentment which comes from a sense of inner confidence based on the sufficiency of God. For we have brought nothing into the world, so it is clear that we cannot take anything out of it either. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. But those who are not financially ethical and crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth, fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, leading to personal misery. For the love of money, that is, the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically, is a root of all sorts of evil, and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows. But as for you, O man of God, flee from these things, aim at and pursue righteousness, true goodness, moral conformity to the character of God, godliness, the fear of God, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith in the conflict with evil. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and for which you made the good confession of faith in the presence of many witnesses. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things, and in the presence of Christ Jesus, who made the good confession, in his testimony before Pontius Pilate, to keep all his precepts without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about in his own time, he who is blessed and only sovereign, the absolute ruler, the king of those who reign as kings, and the lord of those who rule as lords. He alone possesses immortality, absolute exemption from death, and lives in unapproachable light, whom no man has ever seen or can see, to him be the honor and eternal power and dominion. Amen. As for the rich in this present world, instruct them not to be conceited and arrogant, nor set to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly and ceaselessly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous, willing to share with others, in this way, storing up for themselves the enduring riches of a good foundation for the future, 
so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. O Timothy, guard and keep safe the deposit of godly truth entrusted to you. Turn away from worldly and godless chatter with its profane empty words and the contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and by doing so have erred, missed the mark, and strayed from the faith. Grace be with you. This was not the only reason God had sent me there. I was to speak to the salesman who does follow God to a degree, and to talk with a young salesman who was going through very hard trials and tribulations. I told the first salesman what God wanted me to say to him a month ago, which is that he needs to separate from the Masonic order he is an active part of because that is not of God. The Masons are a sect that have very secretive functions and foundations that make man rely on man rather than God. This is witchcraft of Satan. Revelation 3, 14 through 22 To the angel, divine messenger of the church in Laodicea, write, These are the words of the, of the Amen, the trusted and faithful and true witness, the beginning and origin of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold, invigor, invigorating, refreshing, nor hot, healing, therapeutic. I wish that you were hot or cold, so because you are lukewarm, spiritually useless, and neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. Because you say, I am rich, and have prospered, and grown wealthy, and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, without hope, and in great need, I counsel you to buy from me gold that has been heated red hot, and refined by fire, so that you may become truly rich, and white clothes, representing righteousness, to clothe yourself, so that the shame of your nakedness will not be seen, and healing salve. To be put on your eyes so that you may see those whom i dearly and tenderly love i rebuke and discipline showing them their faults and instructing them so be enthusiastic and repent change your inner self your old way of thinking your sinful behavior seek god's will behold i stand at the door of the church and continually knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door i will come in and eat with him restore him and he with me he who overcomes the world through believing that jesus is the son of god I will grant to him the privilege to sit beside me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down beside my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear, and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. Then I spoke with the young man Isaiah about his life, what he has been going through, and he counseled him as we both cried together. I told him that he doesn't need a church to find and follow God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. He only need to talk with them as we were talking to each other. He mentioned that he has been going to his mom's gravesite and praying to her for help and guidance. I guided him to this. It's good that you talk to your mom, but the only people you should be praying to are God and Jesus Christ. Then I relayed to him that I had done the very same thing in my past with no avail as only God and Jesus Christ can do anything for you, not man. I explained to him how my life had changed because of giving my life to God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Absolutely everything of myself. I then said, it may take a while before you start seeing God move in your life, and to wait patiently, asking them for everything, casting all your cares onto them, and to seek God's will for his life. After this, we continued talking about how far he has come from who he used to be. Then I pointed out to him that he is on the right path with God, and God is leading him to who he is to become. Not to rely on his own understanding, as God's ways are unfathomable to mankind. I then explained to him that God is not a religion, but a relationship, and that is what we must strive for. John 16, 31-33 Jesus answered them, do you, now, do you now at last believe? Take careful notice. An hour is coming, and has arrived, when you will all be scattered, each to his own home, leaving me alone, and yet I am not alone, because the Father is in me, with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have perfect peace, in the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. John 15, 1-27 I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes, so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, 
Neither can you bear fruit, producing evidence of your faith, unless you remain in me. <clears throat> I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown out like a broken off branch, and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, that is, if we are in, if we are vitally united, and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this, when you bear much fruit, and prove yourselves to be my true disciples. I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love, and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. <coughs> I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you, and that your joy may be <coughs> made full and complete and overflowing. This is my commandment, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you to do. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends, because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposely planted you, so that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing, and that your fruit will remain and be lasting, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give to you. This is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. If the world hates you, and it does, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own and would treat you with affection. But you are not of the world. You no longer belong to it. But I have chosen you out of the world, and because of this, the world hates you. Remember and continue to remember that I told you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But they will do all these things, hurtful things, to you for my name's sake, because you bear my name and are identified with me. For they do not know the one who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have the guilt of their sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. The one who hates me also hates my father. If I had not done among them the works attesting miracles which no one else ever did, they would not have the guilt of their sin. But now the fact is that they have both seen these works and have hated me and continue to hate me and my father as well. But this is so that the world word which has been written in their law would be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause, but when the helper, comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby comes, whom I will send you to you from the Father, that is the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify and bears witness about me, but you will testify also and be my witnesses, because you have been with me from the beginning. Matthew 6, 1-34 Be very careful not to do your own good deeds publicly, to be seen by men, otherwise you will have no reward, prepared and awaiting for you, with your Father who is in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not blow a trumpet before you to advertise it, as the hypocrites do, like actors acting out a role in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be honored and recognized and praised by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. But when you give to the poor and do acts of kindness, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give in complete secrecy so that your charitable acts will be done in secret. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Also, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray publicly, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, so that they may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your most private room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. So do not be like them, praying as they do, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then in this way, Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, letting go of both the wrong and the resentment. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive others their trespasses, their reckless and willful sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, nurturing your hurt and anger with the result that it interferes with your relationship with God, then your Father will not forgive your trespasses. And whenever you are fasting, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they put on a sad and dismal face like actors, discoloring their faces with ashes or dirt, so that their fasting may be seen by men. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, they already have their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head, as you normally would, to groom your hair, and wash your face, so that your fasting will not be noticed by people. But by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves material treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart, your wishes, your desires, that on which your life centers, will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is clear, spiritually perceptive, your whole body will be full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. But if your eye is bad, spiritually blind, your whole body will be full of darkness, devoid of God's precepts. So if the very light inside you, your inner self, your heart, your conscience, is darkness, how great and terrible is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon, money, possessions, fame, status, or whatever is valued more than the Lord. Therefore, I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted about your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow seed, nor reap the harvest, nor gather the crops in the barns. And yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by worrying, can add one hour to the length of his life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wildflowers of the field grow? They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, What are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and the character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has its own trouble of its own. 7-7-2023 Today God sent me to a food pantry in Dixon, Illinois, but had not told me why. When I arrived, I asked my father what his will was for me, my next step with him and his path for me. God told me to shut off the van, to go to every car, to ask to pray for everyone. Now I knew why he had not told me why I was going there, because he did not want me to get worked up and thinking people would not accept it. This would not be the case, though, as 32 out of 34 vehicles gladly accepted my prayers for them. Some were quite emotional. Some talked with me more about their struggles as I was allowed to counsel them in the gospel and on their journey with God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Because God had had me go through everything, I am able to relate to everyone despite their circumstances and struggles. This is why I have had to suffer most of my life before I found God and Jesus Christ and my salvation from them. I was asked a few times if I am a pastor, to which I replied, no, not appointed by man, but by God himself. I relayed that man does not appoint man, only God can appoint man. Then asked what church I attend, as I replied, God is my church. He leads, guides, and teaches me all things true. You do not need a church or man to lead you to God. Only relying on God and Jesus Christ will save you, not man. Some people asked me to pray for them financially, to which I asked, 
How about I pray for you to have the riches of heaven to come into your life as that encompasses all things? To which they gladly agreed. Today was an amazing day, even better than getting the van my father told me was mine a month ago, as these are the true riches of God's and Jesus Christ's kingdom. I have had much and had nothing in my life and know how to be content with all situations as can only come from truly obeying, trusting, and having faith in God and his promises to you, which you will only receive shall you live in his will for your life. Be patient in your waiting, praising God and Jesus Christ through the storms, forgiving all, loving all, and doing what you can for all of creation. You will not fail shall you do this, and your reward will be greater than you can ever think or imagine. Psalms 84 and 1 through 12. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Lord of hosts! My soul, my life, my inner self longs for and greatly desires the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. The bird has found a house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed and greatly favored are those who dwell in your house and your presence. They will be singing your praises all the day long. Selah, blessed and greatly favored is the man whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of weeping, Baca, they make it a place of springs. The, the, eager, the early rain also covers it with blessings. They go from strength to strength, increasing in victorious power. Each of them appears before God in Zion. O Lord, of, Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob, Selah. See our shield, O God, and look at the face of your anointed, the king, as your representative. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand as a doorkeeper at the threshold of, my, of the house of my God than to live at ease in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows grace and favor and honor. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, how blessed and greatly favored is the man who trusts in you, believing in you, relying on you, committing himself to you with confident hope and expectation. Psalm 16, 1-11 Keep and protect me, O God, for in you I have placed my trust and found refuge. I said to the Lord, You are my, my Lord. I have no good besides you. As for the saints, godly people who are in the land, they are the majestic and the noble and the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows, pain, and suffering of those who have chosen another God will be multiplied because of their idolatry. I will not pour out their drink offerings of blood, nor will I take their names upon my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance, my cup. He is all I need. You support my lot. The boundary lines of the land have fallen for me in a pleasant places. Indeed, my heritage is beautiful to me. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my heart, mind, instructs me in the night. I have set the Lord continually before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my glory, my innermost self, rejoices. My body, too, will dwell confidently in safety. For you will not abandon me to Sheol, the netherworld, the place of the dead. Nor will you allow your Holy One to undergo decay. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Ephesians 5, 1 through 21 Therefore, become in imitators of God. Copy Him and follow His example. As well, beloved children, imitate their Father, and walk continually in love, that is, value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God slain for you, so that it became a sweet fragrance. But sexual immorality and all moral impurity, indecent offensive behavior or greed, must not even be hinted at among you, as it as is proper among saints, for as believers of our way of life, whether in public or in private, reflects the validity of our faith. Let there be no filthiness and silly talk, or coarse, obscene, or vulgar joking, because such things are not appropriate for believers. But instead, speak of your thankfulness to God. For be sure of this, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, for that one is in effect an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God, for such a person places a higher value on something other than God. Let no one deceive you with empty arguments that encourage you to sin, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience, those who habitually sin. 
So do not participate or even associate with them in the rebelliousness of sin. For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Live as those who are native-born to the light. For the fruit, the effect, the result of the light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth, trying to learn by experience what is pleasing to the Lord, and letting your lifestyles be examples of what is most acceptable to Him, your behavior, expressing your gratitude toward God for your salvation. Do not participate in the worthless and unproductive deeds of darkness, but instead expose them by exemplifying personal integrity, moral courage, and godly character. For it is disgraceful even to mention the things that such people practice in secret. But all things become visible when they are exposed by the light of God's precepts. For it is, the, is light that makes everything visible. For this reason he says, Awake, sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine as dawn upon you and give you light. Therefore see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity, and using it with wisdom and diligence, because the days are filled with evil. Therefore do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. Speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, offering praise by singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for all things, in the, say, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, being subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Job 34, 21-28 <clears throat> For God's eyes are on the ways of a man, and he sees all his steps. There is no darkness nor deep shadow where the evildoers may hide themselves. For he sets no appointed time for a man, that he should appear before him in judgment. He breaks mighty men without inquiry, and sets others in their place. Therefore he knows of their works, and he overthrows them in the night, so that they are crushed and destroyed. He strikes them like the wicked in a public place, because they turned aside from following him, and would not consider or show regard for any of his ways, so that they caused the cry of the poor to come to him. And he heard the cry of the afflicted. James 1, 9-11 let the brother in humble circumstances glory in his high position as a born-again believer, called to the true riches and to be an heir of God, and the rich man is to glory in being humbled by trials, receiving human frailty, knowing true riches are found in the grace of God. For like the flower of the, of the grass, he will pass away. For the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers the grass. Its flower falls off and its beauty fades away. So too will the rich man, in the midst of his pursuits, fade away. 7, 8, 9, and 10, 2023. On 7, 8, 2023, my son Dylan and my friend Sean and I went to McChesney Park, Illinois, to my mom's house. Once we arrived, God told me to call the brother and sister who had come to Christ. I tried to call the hotel where they were staying in, as well as her cell phone, but each time the evildoers blocked them. They did this trying to intimidate them both, as they were wanting guidance from God on what they should be doing. This did not surprise me, as they have done this to me for the past six years, off and on. After I tried calling them, I went to pick up the U-Haul with my mom that my mom rented. When I arrived at the location to do a mobile phone check-in to retrieve the truck, the evildoers were blocking me from using the website until I called customer support for assistance. Once on the phone with the agent, the site started working properly. Once on the phone with the agent, the site started working properly, but when it came time to pay for it, they were again blocking the transaction from going through. It was at this point I called my mom to tell her the card was being declined. I told her the agent said she had to contact her bank to get it resolved. She told me to go to her bank and check her balance, so Sean and I went to her ATM. On the way there, we saw a motorcycle laying on the ground, broken into pieces, smoking, with the rider laying on his back. God told me to pray for him, so both Sean and I prayed for him. We left the bank, then proceeded to the storage unit to give my mom the money left in her account, as she had way less than she should have had, as she was just paid just days before and had not spent anything. We ended up using the van God had provided for me just days earlier after he told me a month ago it would be mine. This is a perfect example of God's perfect timing. Having known what was going to have happen and having made the way to get everything moved before she was charged again for the unit. She had called CubeSmart in Rockford, Illinois on Friday to cancel the unit. 
The person she talked with told her she had to have everything out before Monday or she would be charged again. However, Saturday, she received an email from CubeSmart telling her she had to pay that day after this man told her he took care of it and she was good to go. This is what the evildoers do to try to get you to give up on God, to derail you from your path with God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They try to put you into financial distress to occupy your mind with worry, anxiety, and doubt to make you give up. Fortunately, my mom had, has progressed with God enough that she did not let it get to her. It was close to 2.30 p.m. before we started moving her possessions, as during the check-in process with the truck, they had moved the reservation time from 11 a.m. to 12 to 1, then 2 p.m. before God told me to move on. These are just a few of the things I do to God's children to prevent them from their paths with God and Jesus Christ. During this day, which lasted until 7 a.m. on Sunday, on the 9th, the evildoers tried coming at me with everything they had left. Police always around me with their lights on, vehicular intimidation of the evildoers to both me and my mom until they realized they were spinning their wheels with me. At that point, they turned their attention to my mom, slowing her down 10 to 15 miles per hour under the speed limit and blocking both lanes so she could not get by. She remembered me telling her the evildoers do this as well and did not let it get to her. By 11 p.m., the evildoers in Rockford, Illinois had been begging for a truce, even to the point of putting a white scarf on both rear windows of a car that pulled next to me, then swerving back and forth to signal their pleas for mercy as they were all being taken down. Of course, I told them there will never be peace between us. After this occurred, they all went away. I even received a middle finger from one of them on the drive home that morning as God had taken them all down, having reduced their crew to only the local residents. Another town saved again. God 3, evil doers 0. Psalms 37, 1-40 do not worry because of evildoers, nor be envious toward wrongdoers, for they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust, rely on, and have confidence in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed securely on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him also, and he will do it. He will make your righteousness, your pursuit of right standing with God, like the light, and your judgment like the shining of the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord, wait patiently for him, and entrust yourself to him. Do not fret, whine, agonize because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who do evil will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. For yet a little while, and the wicked one will be gone forever. Though you look carefully where he used to be, he will not be found. But the humble will at last inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity and peace. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at him with his teeth. The Lord laughs at him, the wicked one, the one who oppresses the righteous, for he sees that his day of defeat is coming. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow, bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slaughter those who are upright in conduct, those with personal integrity and godly character. The sword of the ungodly will enter their own heart, and their bow, bow will be broken. Better is the little of, right, of the righteous who seek the will of God than the abundance riches of many wicked godless. For the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds and sustains the righteous who seek him. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their inheritance will continue forever. They will not be ashamed in the time of evil, and in the days of famine they will have plenty and be satisfied. But the wicked, ungodly, will perish, and the enemies of the Lord will be like the glory of the pastures, and like the fat of lambs that is consumed in smoke. They vanish, like smoke they vanish away. The wicked borrows and does not pay back, but the righteous is gracious and kind and gives. For those blessed by God will at last inherit the land, but those cursed by him will be cut off. The steps of a good and righteous man are directed and established by the Lord, and he delights in his way and blesses his path. When he falls, he will not be hurled down, because the Lord is the one who holds his hand and sustains him. I have been young, and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous, those in right standing with God, abandoned, or his descendants, pleading for bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, and you will dwell securely in the land forever. For the Lord delights in justice, and does not abandon his saints, faithful ones. They are preserved forever. But the wicked, but the descendants of the wicked will in time be cut off. The righteous will inherit the land and live in it forever. The mouth of the righteous proclaims wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice and truth.
The law of his God is in his heart. Not one of his steps will slip. The wicked lies in wait for the righteous and seeks to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand or let him be condemned when he is judged. Wait for and expect the Lord and keep his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. In the end, when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. I have seen a wicked, violent man with great power, spreading and flaunting himself like a cedar in its native soil. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was no more. I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the blameless man who is spiritually complete, and behold the upright who walks in moral integrity. There is a good future for the man of peace, because a life of honor blesses one's descendants. As for transgressors, they will be completely destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off, but the salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge and stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. Job 34.22 There is no darkness nor deep shadow where the evildoers may hide themselves. Proverbs 24.15-22 Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not destroy his resting place, for a righteous man falls seven times and rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of disaster and collapse. Do not rejoice and gloat when your enemy falls, and do not let your heart be glad in self-righteousness when he stumbles. Or the Lord will see your gloating and will be displeased, and turn his anger away from your enemy. Do not get upset because of evildoers, or be envious of the wicked, for there will be no future for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. My son, fear the Lord and the King, and do not associate with those who are given to change of allegiance and are revolutionary, for their tragedy will rise suddenly. And who knows the punishment that both the Lord and the King will bring on the rebellious? James 5, 13 through 16 Is anyone among you suffering? He must pray. Is anyone joyful? He is to sing praises to God. Is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, spiritual leaders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of the faith, a prayer of faith, will restore the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of the of a righteous man, believer, is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Philippians 4, 19 and 20 And my God will liberally supply, fill until full, your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs 10.3 The Lord will not allow the righteous to hunger. God will meet all his needs, but he will reject and cast away the craving of the wicked. Numbers 23.19 God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. He has said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good and fulfill it? Ecclesiastes 3.1-22 there is a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there for the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the task which God has given to the sons of men with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose, in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good as long as they live, and also that every man should eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor can anything be taken from it. 
for God does it so that men will fear and worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is God. That which has already been and that which will be has already been, for God seeks what has passed by so that history repeats itself. Moreover, I have seen under the sun that in the place of justice there is wickedness, and in the place of righteousness there is wickedness. I said to myself, God will judge both the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time appointed for every matter and for every deed. I said to myself, regarding the sons of men, God is surely testing them in order for them to see that by themselves, without God, they are only animals. For the earthly fate of the sons of men and the fate of the animals is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they all have the same breath, and there is no preeminence or advantage for man in and of himself over an animal, for all is vanity. All go to the same place, all came from the dust, and all return to the dust. Who knows if the spirit of man ascends upward, and the spirit of the animal descends downward to the earth. So I have seen that there is nothing better than that a man should be happy in his own works and activities, for that is his portion, share, for who will bring him back to see what will happen after he is gone? Proverbs 16, through 7 The plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean and innocent in his own eyes, and he may see nothing wrong with his actions. But the Lord weighs and examines the motives and intents of the heart and knows the truth. Commit your works to the Lord, submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked according to their role, for the day of evil. Everyone who is proud and arrogant in heart is disgusting and exceedingly offensive to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. By mercy and loving kindness and truth, not superficial ritual, wickedness is cleansed from the heart, and by the fear of the Lord one avoids evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. After we arrived home on 7-9-2023, I took a shower, then ate before going to bed at 10.30 a.m. Both Sean and I thought we would be in a lot of pain, having moved a five-bedroom house of possessions for 17 straight hours. But as it turned out, we were not feeling any pain as God had provided us with the energy, focus, strength, and calm to not only get through, but flourish through it all. This is the power of prayer. You pray for everything that you need. Leave everything at God and Jesus Christ's feet, and watch them work miracles in your life. The brother and sister tried texting me later in the day, but God told me not to answer them, yet as they were still leaning on what they can do for themselves rather than relying on God and Jesus Christ. God then had me go to the gas station to ask to pray for the same cashier who denied me the other day. This time God told me to ask her if she would like to accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior. She responded, He is my Lord and Savior. I have my own prayer that I use, so no. God was having me plant the seed to allow it to grow in her to bring her to them. My friend Sean then asked me on our way back to his house if I would call his cousin, who was having an identity crisis, to counsel him. I told him if that is what God has planned for me, I would. Then he was asking me if I would pray for other people he knows here in Mount Morris, Illinois, where we are staying with him, his mom, and his dad. This is the next town God has sent me to, to take down the evildoers here, and I am more than happy to obey, as always. When we arrived back at Sean's house, God had me go over to his neighbor to speak with her, as a man who needed prayer stopped by. God told me to ask him if I could pray for him, so I did. He gladly accepted. When we had finished, he asked me what church I attend, and I said, God is who leads, guides, and teaches me all things. You do not need a church or man to tell you how you should live. God does that. He is a relationship, not a religion. After this, he thanked me, then went on his way. So now I turned to Sean's neighbor to pray for her. She happily agreed, too. I counseled her on gossiping about people and not judging people, lest we are judged as well. Before I left, she thanked me, then said, You, kn you changed how I look at everything. Thank you so much for opening my eyes. I have a lot of things to think about and change. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things which he has called me to do through him who strengthens and empowers me to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength and confident peace. 2 Corinthians 12.9 and 10 But he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough always available regardless of the situation for my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness 
Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. So I am well pleased with weakness, weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, and with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. Isaiah 40, 28-31 Do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, does not become tired or grow weary. There is no searching of His understanding. He gives strength to the weary, and to him who has no might, He increases power. Even youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in Him, will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. Proverbs 3, 5 through 8. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him and he will make your paths straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord with reverent awe and obedience and turn entirely away from evil. It will be health to your body, your marrow, your nerves, your sinews, your muscles, all your inner parts, and refreshment, physical well-being to your bones. Matthew 6, 25-34 Therefore I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted about your life, as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food, and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, they neither sow seed, nor reap the harvest, nor gather the crops into barns. And yet your heavenly Father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by worrying, can add one hour of length to his life? And why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and wildflowers of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you, that not even Solomon in all his glory and splendor dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the fleet field, which is alive and green today, and tomorrow is cut and thrown as fuel into the furnace, Will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, therefore do not worry or be anxious, perpetually uneasy, distracted, saying, What are we going to eat? What are we going to drink? What are we going to wear? For the pagan Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, but do not worry, for your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But first and most importantly, seek at, aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Matthew 13, 18-23 and 36-43 Listen then to the meaning of the parable of the sower. Sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom regarding salvation and does not understand and grasp it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has was sown in his heart. This is the one on whom the seed was sown beside the road. The one on whom seed was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word, and at once welcomes it with joy, yet he has no substantial root in himself, but is only temporary, and when pressure or persecution comes because of the word, immediately he stumbles and falls away, abandoning the one who is the source of salvation. And the one on whom seed was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the worries and distractions of the world and the deceitfulness, the superficial pleasures and delight of riches choke the word and it yields no fruit. And the one on whom the seed was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands and grasps it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, some a hundred times as much as was sown, some sixty times as much, and some thirty. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain clearly to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world. And as for the good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom, and the weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. So just as the weeds are gathered up and burned in the fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, those things by which people are led into sin, and all those who practice evil leading others into sin, and will throw them into the furnace of fire. In that place there will be weeping over sorrow and pain and grinding of teeth over distress and anger. Then the righteous, those who seek the will of God, will shine forth, radiating the new life like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who hears has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. 
Matthew 23, 1-12. Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and his disciples, saying, The scribes and Pharisees have seated themselves in Moses' chair, the authority as teachers of the law. So practice and observe everything they tell you, but do not do as they do, for they preach things, but do not practice them. The scribes and Pharisees tie up heavy loads that are hard to bear, and place them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to make them lighter. They do all their deeds to be seen by men, for they make their phylacteries, teflon, wide to make them more conspicuous, and make their tassels long. They love the place of distinction and honor at feasts, and the best seats in the synagogues, those on the platform near the scrolls of the law, facing the congregation, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and public forums, and to have people call them rabbi. But do not be called rabbi, teacher, for one is your teacher, and you are all equally brothers. Do not call anyone on earth who guides you spiritually your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Do not let yourselves be called leaders or teachers, for one is your leader, teacher, the Christ. But the greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be raised to honor. <coughs> Deuteronomy 8, 5, and 6. Therefore, know in your heart, be fully cognizant that the Lord your God disciplines and instructs you, just as a man disciplines and instructs his son. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk, that is, to live each and every day in his ways, and fear and worship him with awful reverence and profound respect. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9. But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great distress and trouble will come, difficult days that will be hard to bear. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane, and they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused and inhumane, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, devoid of self-control, intemperate, immoral, brutal haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. Avoid such people and keep far away from them, for among them are those who worm their way into homes and captivate morally weak and spiritually dwarfed women, weighed down by the burden of their sins, easily swayed by various impulses, always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, just as Janus and Jambres, the court of magicians of Egypt, opposed Moses. So these men also opposed the truth, men of depraved mind, unqualified and worthless as teachers, in regard to the faith. But they will not get very far, for their meaningless nonsense and ignorance will become obvious to everyone, as that was that of Janus and Jambres. Proverbs 26, 22-28 The words of a whisperer, gossip, are like dainty morsels to be greedily eaten, they go down into the innermost chambers of the body to be remembered and mused upon, like a common clay vessel covered with silver dross, making it appear silver when it has no real value, our burning lips, murmuring manipulative words, and a wicked heart. He who hates disguises it with his lips, but he stores up deceit in his heart. When he speaks graciously and kindly to conceal his malice, do not trust him, for his seven abominations are in his heart. Though his hatred covers itself with guile and deceit, his malevolence will be revealed openly before the assembly. Whoever digs a pit for another man's feet will fall into it, and he who rolls a stone up a hill to do mischief, it will come back on him. A lying tongue hates those it wounds and crushes, and a flattering mouth works ruin. Ephesians 4, 17-32 So I say this, and solemnly affirm, together with the Lord as in his presence, that you must no longer live as the unbelieving Gentiles live, in the futility of their minds, and in the foolishness and emptiness of their souls. For their moral understanding is darkened, and their reasoning is clouded. They are alienated and self-banished from the life of God, with no share in it. This is because of the willful ignorance and spiritual blindness that is deep-seated within them, because of the hardness and insensitivity of their heart. And they, the ungodly in their spiritual apathy, have become callous and unfeeling, have given themselves over as prey to unbridled sensuality, eagerly craving the practice of every kind of impurity that their desires may demand. But you did not learn Christ in this way. In fact, you have really heard him and have been taught by him, just as truth is in Jesus revealed in his life and personified in him, that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self, 
completely discard your former nature, which is being corrupted through deceitful desires, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature, created in God's image, Godlike in the righteousness and holiness of the truth, living in a way that expresses to God your gratitude for your salvation. Therefore, rejecting all falsehood, whether lying, defrauding, telling half-truths, spreading rumors, any such as these, speak truth, each one with his neighbor, for we are all parts of one another, and we are all parts of the body of Christ. Be angry at sin, at immorality, at injustice, at ungodly behavior, yet do not sin. Do not let your anger cause you shame, nor allow it to last until the sun goes down. And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge, or nurturing anger, or harboring resentment, or cultivating bitterness. The thief who has become a believer must no longer steal, but instead he must work hard, making an honest living, producing that which is good with his own hands, so that he will have something to share with those in need. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, vulgar words ever come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good for building up others, according to the need and the occasion, so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you speak. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, but seek to please him, by whom you were sealed and marked, branded as God's own for the day of redemption, the final deliverance from the consequences of sin. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, perpetual animosity, resentment, strife, fault-finding, and slander be put away from you, along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse, malevolence. Be kind and helpful to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. Matthew 7, 1 through 6. Do not judge and criticize and condemn others unfairly with an attitude of self-righteous superiority as though assuming the office of a judge, so that you will not be judged unfairly. For just as you hypocritically judge others when you are sinful and unrepentant, so will you be judged, and in accordance with your standard of measure, used to pass out judgment. Judgment will be measured to you. Why do you look at the insignificant speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the, and acknowledge the egregious log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me get the speck out of your eye, when there is a log in your own eye? You hypocrite, play actor, pretender, first get the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, for they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Today on 7-10-2023, God had sent me to the store to pray for a woman who has hated me for, who, who has hatred for me from me snubbing her advances 20 years prior. She is the sister of a former friend of mine. Both her and her family hate me because of their son having married the mother of my oldest son as he calls me dad and not him who had adopted him when he was three years old. I had signed off my rights to him because I was not good for him at that time. I stayed in his and their lives for many years in order to help raise him, his brother and sisters. I asked her if I could pray for her, but she came back with a repugnant look on her face saying, Why do you want to pray for me? I replied, Everyone needs prayers. She said, No thanks. So I said, Are you sure? As she walked away laughing. Matthew 5:43 43-48 you have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor, fellow man, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love, that is, unselfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your Father, who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on those who are evil, and on those who are good, and makes the rain fall on the righteous, those who are morally upright, and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brothers, wishing them God's blessing and peace, what more than others are you doing? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know the Lord do that? You, therefore, will be perfect, growing into spiritual maturity both in mind and character, actively integrating godly values into your daily life, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Proverbs 3.29-35 do not devise evil against your neighbor who lives securely beside you. Do not quarrel with a man without cause if he has done you no harm. Do not envy a man of violence and do not choose any of his ways, for the devious are repulsive to the Lord. But his private counsel is with the upright, those with spiritual integrity and moral courage. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the just and righteous. Though he scoffs at the scoffers and scorns the scorners, yet he gives his grace, his undeserved favor to the humble, those who give up self-importance. The wise will inherit honor and glory, but dishonor and shame is conferred on fools. 
I had the interview with the company God told me to apply for. Before the interview was over, the production manager told me he was pushing my paperwork through so I can start as soon as possible. Before I left, God told me to tell him about Sean as he is now looking for work again with my help. I told the manager Sean has the same skills as I in this occupation as well as supervisory experience just as I do. He asked me what his name was so he could find his application and said he would try to get him in there as well. God and Jesus Christ work everything together for the good of those who follow and obey their commands, laws, ways, words, will, and truth. Proverbs 3.27 and 28 Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, its rightful recipients. When it is in your power to do it, do not say to your neighbor, Go and come back, and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Romans 8.26-39 In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what prayer to offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes before God on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. For those whom he foreknew and loved and chose beforehand, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, and ultimately share in his complete sanctification, so that he would be the firstborn, the most beloved and honored among many believers. And those whom he predestined he also called, and those whom he called he also justified, declared free of the guilt of sin, and those whom he justified he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity. What then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? He who did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against God's elect, his chosen ones? It is God who justifies us, declaring us blameless, and putting us in a right relationship with himself. Who is the one who condemns us? Christ Jesus is the one who died to pay our penalty, and more than that, who was raised from the dead, and who is at the right hand of God, interceding with the Father for us, who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Just as it is written, and forever remains written, for your sake we are put to death all day long. We are regarded as sheep for the slaughter, yet in all things we are more than conquerors, and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us, so much that he died for us. For I am convinced and continue to be convinced beyond any doubt that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present and threatening nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the unlimited love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When I arrived home my son and Sean had gone golfing as the neighbor had given them money for doing work for yesterday. This was good for them both as it is Sean's birthday and Dylan and Sean had not golfed since last year. And when they came home, they asked me if I wanted to go with my son to golf the back nine in place of Sean. This was God providing both my son and I the opportunity to get closer and have some fun for us as we had not golfed together since last May. I give God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, their impeccable Holy Spirit, and their holy angels, all the praise and glory for absolutely everything good and bad. There is nothing that happens by chance. It is all preordained depending on who you are listening to, God or Satan. Everything good and bad works for the good and glory of God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, and those who love, obey, and follow their commands, laws, ways, will, words, and truth. Psalms 86, 1-17 Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am distressed and needy. I long for your help. Protect my life, soul, for I am godly and faithful. O you, my God, save your servant, who trusts in you, believing in you and relying on you, confidently committing everything to you. Be gracious and merciful to me, O Lord, for to you I cry out all the day long. Make your servant rejoice, for to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, all that I am in prayer. For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive our sins, sending them away completely, letting them go forever and ever, and abundant in loving kindness and overflowing in mercy to all those who call upon you. Hear, O Lord, my prayer, and listen attentively to the voice of my supplications, specific requests. In the day of my trouble I will call upon you, for you will answer me. There is no one like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works of wonder and majesty like yours. 
All nations whom you have made shall come and kneel down and worship before you, O Lord, and they shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous works. You alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk and live in your truth. Direct my heart to fear your name with awe-inspired reverence and submissive wonder. I will give thanks and praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and will glorify your name forevermore. For great is your loving kindness and gracious toward me, and you have rescued my life from the depths of Sheol, from death. O God, arrogant and insolent men have risen up against me. A band of violent men have sought my life, and they have not set you before them. But you, O Lord, are a God who protects and is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Grant your strength, your might, and the power to resist temptation to your servant, and save the son of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your good will, that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed, because you, O Lord, helped me and comforted me. <clears throat> Revelations 14, 6 and 7. That I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven with an eternal gospel to preach to the inhabitants of the earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God with awe and reverence and give him glory and honor and praise in worship, because the hour of his judgment has come. With all your heart, worship him who created the heaven and the earth and the sea and the springs of the water. On 7-11-2023, I had to go to court at the Winnebago County Courthouse for an order of protection against my sister, Chastity Nance, for her continued attempts at harassing myself and my son, Dylan. She had come over to my deceased grandmother's house in order to convince my mom to kick my son, our dog, and I out of the house. She kept telling my mom that I am worthless, delusional, and we were only there to bring her down. I received texts stating even more of this as well as a voice recording of her that my son took, which was even more disturbing than the texts. During this time, Chastity had come to my son on two separate occasions trying to intimidate him, trying to dehumanize him, and eventually tried ripping dishes he was washing out of his hands, which resulted in her cutting him with a pair of scissors, which is why God told me to file against her. After court on 6-27-2023, I went to the Ogle County Jail to drop the summons papers off so they could serve her. I took video of this interaction and Sergeant White laughed, saying, We'll take care of it. This, of course, did not happen as the judge had to reissue the summons so I could again take them to the Ogle County Sheriff's Office, which I did this morning. I told them what happened, who I gave it to, and his response to me, as I also told them I have the interaction on video. They said they would send it out immediately. They have previously done this the same exact thing to me over a year ago in their vain attempt to get me to stop doing what God has called me to do. However, this will never stop me from following and obeying God ever. Luke 17, 1 through 10. Jesus said to his disciples, stumbling blocks, temptations, and traps set to lure one into sin are sure to come, but woe, judgment is coming to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a milestone, as large as, a, as one turned by a donkey, were hung around his neck and he were hurled into the sea, than for him to cause one of these little ones to stumble in sin and lose faith. Pay attention and always be on guard, looking out for one another. If your brother sins and disregards God's precepts, solemnly warn him, and if he repents and changes, forgive him. Even if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times and says, I repent, you must forgive him. That is, give up resentment and consider the offense recalled and annulled. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith, our ability to confidently trust in God and in his power. And the Lord said, If you have confident abiding faith in God, even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, which has very strong roots, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And if the request was in agreement with the will of God, it would have obeyed you. Which of you who has a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he comes in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat? Will he not instead say to him, Prepare something for me to eat and appropriately clothe yourself for service and serve me while I eat and drink? Then afterward you may eat and drink. He does not thank the servant just because he did what he was ordered to do, does he? So you too, when you have done everything that was assigned and commanded you, say, We are our unworthy servants, undeserving of praise and reward, or a reward. For we have not gone beyond our obligation. We have merely done what we ought to do. Jeremiah 9, 1-26 Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night, for the slain of the daughter of my people. O oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place, a mere shelter, a wayfaring men, 
that I might leave my people and go away from them. For they are all adulterers, worshipping idols instead of the Lord. They are an assembly of treacherous men, of weak character, men without integrity. They bend their tongue like their bow. Their lies and their and not truth prevail and grow strong in the land. For they proceed from evil to evil, and they do not know and understand and acknowledge me, says the Lord. Let everyone beware of his neighbor, and do not trust any brother. For every brother is a supplanter, like Jacob, a deceiver, ready to grab his mother's his brother's heel. And every neighbor goes around as a slanderer. Everyone deceives and mocks his neighbor, and does not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. They exhaust themselves with sin and cruelty. Your dwelling is in the midst of deceit, oppression upon oppression, and deceit upon deceit. Through deceit they refuse to know. Understand me, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them through suffering and test them. For how else should I deal with the daughter of my people? Their tongue is a murderous arrow. It speaks deceit. With his mouth one speaks peace to his neighbor. But in his heart he lays traps and waits in ambush for him. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? I will make, I will take a, up a weeping and wailing for the mountains, and a funeral dirge for the pastures of the wilderness, because they are not burned up, because they are burned up and desolated, so that no one passes through them. Nor can anyone hear the lowing of cattle. Both the birds of the air and the beasts have fled. They are gone. I will make Jerusalem a heap of ruins, a haunt and dwelling place of jackals. And I will make the cities of Judah a desolation without inhabitant. Who is the wise man who may understand this without any doubt? To whom has the mouth of the Lord spoken, so that he may declare it? Why is the land ruined, laid waste like a wilderness, so that no one passes through? The Lord said, Because they have turned away from my law, which I set before them, and have not listened to and obeyed my voice, nor walked in accordance with it, but have walked stubbornly after their own heart and after the balls, as their fathers taught them. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, this people, with wormwood, and give them bitter and poisonous water to drink. I will also scatter them among the nations that neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send the sword after them until I have annihilated them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider and call for the mourning women to come. Send for the wailing women to come. Let them hurry and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may shed tears and our eyelids flow with water. For a sound of wailing is heard coming from Zion. How we are ruined! We are greatly perplexed and utterly ashamed, because we have left the land, because they have torn down our dwellings. Now hear the word of the Lord, O you women, and let your ear hear the word of his mouth. Teach your daughters a song of mourning, and each one teach his neighbor a dirge. For death has come upon through our windows. It has entered our palaces, cutting off the children from the streets, and the young men from the town squares. Speak, thus says the Lord, the dead bodies of the men will fall like dung on the open field, and like sheaves of grain behind the reaper, and no one will gather them, thus says the Lord. Let not the one who is wise and skillful boast in his insight. Let not the one who is mighty and powerful boast in his strength. Let not the one who is rich boast in his temporal satisfactions and earthly abundance. But let the one who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me and acknowledges me and honors me as God and recognizes without any doubt that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all who are circumcised physically and yet uncircumcised spiritually. Egypt and Judah and Edom and the sons of Ammon and Moab and all those who live in the desert who clip off the hair on their temples. For all these nations are uncircumcised, sinful, and pure, and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised, uncircumcised in their heart. Over the past month, God has had me not sharing very much about the gospel or doing any post for him in his kingdom. This has been very difficult for me to do, as all I want to do is bring those in the darkness to God and Jesus Christ, light of truth for their salvation. I was told to live in this world for the time being to confuse the evildoers, to watch and listen to entertainment of this world, but could not. I tried hard to do these things as I was commanded, but when you have been reborn in Christ and have become more Christ-like, it is nearly impossible to do, as you are no longer of this world or the things in it. Due to this, you are uncomfortable doing what you have done in your previous dead life, as you now know the truth and have been set free from this sinful way of living, having been renewed in your mind daily by God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit, and God's angels. 
Romans 12, 1 through 21. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all yourselves, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to everyone of you not to think more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so that as to have sound judgment, as God has apportioned to each a degree of faith and a purpose destined for service. For just as in one physical body we have many parts, and these parts do not all have the same function or special use, so we, who are many, are nevertheless just one body in Christ, and individually we are parts of one another, mutually dependent on each other. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to use them accordingly. If someone has a gift of, gift of prophecy, let him speak a new message from God to his people, in proportion to the faith possessed. If service in the act of serving, or he who teaches in the act of teaching, or he who encourages in the act of encouragement, he who gives with generosity, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy in caring for others with cheerfulness. Love is to be sincere and active, the real thing, without guile and hypocrisy. Hate what is evil, detest all ungodliness, do not tolerate wickedness. Hold on tightly to what is good. Be devoted to one another with authentic brotherly affection as members of one family. Give preference to one another in honor, never lagging behind in diligence. A glow in the spirit, enthusiastically serving the Lord. Constantly rejoicing in hope because of our confidence in Christ. Steadfast and patient in distress, devoted to prayer, continually seeking wisdom, guidance, and strength, contributing to the needs of God's people, pursuing the practice of hospitality. Bless those who persecute you, who cause you harm or hardship. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing others' joy, and weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, conceited, self-important, exclusive, but associate with humble people, those with a realistic self-view. Do not overestimate yourself. Never repay anyone evil for evil. Take thought for what is right and gracious and proper in the sight of everyone. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God's wrath and his judicial righteous righteousness. For it is written in Scripture, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome and conquered by evil, but overcome evil with good. It is imperative for you not to lose focus on God and Jesus Christ during any times you are being drawn away from their path for your life, as it is difficult to come back to it. When this happens, ask God to put you back onto his path for your life. Ask for forgiveness. Ask for their help to pull you through repentance of your sinful ways, as nothing can be done without God and Jesus Christ making it possible. Colossians 3, 1 through 17 Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above the heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. For you died to this world, and your new, real life is hidden with Christ in God. <coughs> when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. So put to death and deprive of power the evil longings of your earthly body with its sensual self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desire, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it replaces your devotion to God. Because of these sinful things, the divine wrath of God is coming on those sons of disobedience, those who fail to listen and who routinely and obstinately disregard God's precepts. And in these sinful things you also once walked when you were habitually living in them without the knowledge of Christ. But now rid yourselves completely of all these things, anger, rage, malice, slander, and obscene, abusive, filthy, vulgar language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, for you have stripped off the old self with its evil practices, and have put on the new spiritual self, who has been continually renewed in the true knowledge, in the image of him who created the new self, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, nor between nations, whether barbarian or Scythian, nor in status 
whether slave or free, but Christ is all and in all, so believers are equal in Christ, without distinction. So as God's own chosen people, who are holy, set apart, sanctified for his purpose, and well-beloved by God himself, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which has the power to endure whatever injustice or unpleasantness comes, with good temper, bearing graciously with one another, and willingly forgiving each other, if one has a cause for complaint against another. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so should you forgive. Beyond all these things, put on and wrap yourselves in unselfish love, which is the perfect bond of unity, for everything is bound together in agreement when each one seeks the best for others. Let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers, and be thankful to God always. Let the spoken word of Christ have its home within you, dwelling in your heart and mind, permeating every aspect of your being, as you teach spiritual things and admonish and train one another with all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do, no matter what it is, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, and in dependence on him, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Jeremiah 6, 1-21 Run for safety, you children of Benjamin, out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow a trumpet in Tekoa, in Judah, and raise a signal fire in Beth Hasherim, near Jerusalem. For evil is looking down with eager anticipation from the north, and great destruction. I will destroy the daughter of Zion, Jerusalem, the lovely and del delicate one, so like a luxurious pasture. Shepherds with their flocks will come against her. They will pitch their tents all around her. They will pasture, each one in his place, eating up all her rich grasses. They shout, Prepare for war against her. Arise, let us take her by surprise and attack her at noon. But alas, the daylight pales, the evening shadows grow long. Arise, let us awaken to attack her at night and destroy her fortified palaces. For the Lord of hosts has said, Cut down her trees and build a siege mound against Jerusalem. This is the city which must be punished. There is nothing but oppression inside her walls. As a fountain springs up and pours out its fresh waters, so she continually pours out her fresh wickedness. Violence and destruction are heard inside her walls. Sickness and wounds are always before me. Be wise and be warned, O Jerusalem, or I will be alienated from you and make you a desolation, an uninhabited land. Thus says the Lord of hosts. They will thoroughly gather like fruit on a vine what is left of Israel. Pass your hand over the vine again and again. Babylon, tool of destruction, like a grape gatherer over the branches, stripping the tendrils off the vine. To whom shall I, Jeremiah, speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ears are closed and absolutely deaf to God, and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord has become a reprimand and an object of scorn to them. They have no delight in it, but I am full of wrath, judgment of the Lord. I am tired of restraining it. I will pour it out on the children in the street and on the young men gathered together, for both the husband and wife shall be taken, the aged and the very old, Though full of days, they are not exempt from judgment. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. For from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unfair gain. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals deceitfully. They have treated superficially the bloody, broken wound of my people, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed because they had committed disgusting and vile things? No. They were not ashamed at all. They did not even know how to blush at their idolatry. Therefore they will fall among those who fall. At that time that I punish them, they will be overthrown, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Stand by the roads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Where the good way is, then walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk in it. I have set watchmen, prophets, over you, saying, Listen and pay attention to the warning sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not listen. Therefore, hear, O Gentile nations, and see, O congregation, what vengeful act is to be done to them. Hear, O earth, behold, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened and paid attention to my words. And as for my law, they have rejected it also. For what purpose does frankincense come to me from Sheba, and the sweet cane from a distant land? Your burnt offerings are not acceptable, and your sacrifices are not sweet and pleasing to me. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I am laying stumbling blocks before this people. The fathers and the sons together will stumble against them. 
the neighbor and his friend will perish. A perfect example of this is my friend Sean having stopped drinking alcohol. On his birthday on 7 2023 he fell off the wagon having bought a bottle of hard alcohol. I went to his room that night to talk with him when I noticed he was drunk. Both his body movements and his speech were telltale signs of this. I asked God if I should say something to him and what I should say. God told me to say nothing, to let Sean sit in his guilt for having done this so he can reflect on it. It is our guilt of sinning against God and Jesus Christ which brings us low enough to seek them out for repentance, forgiveness, and salvation. After I came home from court on 7-11-2023, both Sean and my son Dylan were in the kitchen as Sean was making his signature popcorn, which is delicious by the way. I ate two bowls of it and I do not like popcorn. God has placed this gift in Sean to pursue. After talking with Sean for a minute, I could tell he was drunk yet again, so I asked God what he wanted me to do, as this is part of the reason God has sent my son and I here to help him overcome and get closer to God. God again told me to sit back, observe, and let Sean's conscience guide him back to God and Jesus Christ, so I did. Shortly after our conversation, Sean's sister and her boyfriend came over to see how Sean is doing with his sobriety, as they were also trying to help him through this. They immediately saw the same thing I have on both the previous days. They asked my son if I had noticed this and what I have done about it. Dylan told them that I have witnessed it, but I was waiting for God to tell me when to bring it up to Sean so he can be refocused again. They both agreed with me that while he was intoxicated, we should not approach the situation. They are coming to talk with Sean today when he is sober. During these times, Satan has been hard at work in Sean, derailing his efforts to stay sober and seek God. I watched him kick his dog as I was having God bless him. This is something that shocked both my son and I as it is not in Sean's character to do this. Over the past two to three days Sean has let go of all of his responsibilities as Satan has been attacking him but God told me to let him go through it because if I did it would act as an outside force pushing him back to it and I've only served to push him further away. This is why God will isolate you, take everything away from you and keep bringing the same issues back to you until you get it right by seeking and relying on him and Jesus Christ alone. Hopefully those who are going through these storms will learn from them before they do not have a choice to get it right. God also told me that night that it is time to give him the weed he has allowed me to use for sleep. I have been patiently waiting for God to remove this from my life as well as cigarettes. I have been in constant prayer for their help in pulling me through repentance of my sinful ways to which God told me to keep in prayer and to wait until he said it was time to give it to him. I could not have been more ecstatic to receive this word from him. I had given it to my son to destroy as he had been praying to God for this very moment for a while as well. God keeps his promises. Just remember it is his, it is and always will be on his perfect timing. So if you feel like you have failed God in your attempts at stop, stopping sinning against him, know that you have not disappointed him. He knows you are going to slip from time to time, that when you do you need to pray for forgiveness, their help and repentance for your sinful ways and to be put back onto their path for your life. Do this and it will be so. Just be patient and at the perfect time, God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior will pull you through. After I had given the vape to my son for him to destroy, my friend came outside noticeably drunk. I asked him as to why he had slipped back into drinking, to which he replied, there wasn't anything that triggered it. I thought, well, I can have one drink and it won't affect me, as it is my birthday. But then it turned into more and I couldn't stop. It made me realize that I can't have just one and be done because I can't control it. I told him, you need to pray your way through it with God in order to save Jesus Christ like you did the day I took you to the hospital for it. That day was far worse for you than these last three days. If you do this, you will make it through. Shaw did not like this as the spirit inside of him rebelled against the spirit of God in me that was counseling him. So he attacked me verbally. He said, don't push your beliefs on me. I responded, I am not pushing my beliefs on you. What I am doing is providing you with the truth. He instantly clapped back. What are you, a prophet from God? I said, yes, actually I am. He replied, BS, no one can talk to God. God doesn't talk to anyone. God never did anything for me or my family. I told him, yes, he has. You are still breathing. All the situations that you should have died from, God saved you from these, whether you can see it or not. Then I said, don't ever blame God for anything or tell me God doesn't talk to me or anyone else. At that point, I got up and then told him to have a wonderful night, that I love him, and I am not mad at him. Then I went inside. My son stayed outside with him while he kept degrading and persecuting me. He told Dylan, I grew up in the church. Your dad didn't. I was seventh in the nation for Bible quizzing when I was young. Your dad doesn't know a god darn thing. 
Sean ranted and raved for roughly 30 minutes as the evil spirit attached to him had his way with him. After which he told my son to tell me he was sorry and as his guilt prevented him from coming to tell me himself. This is why God says you can't, you can drink but not become intoxicated. The reason is, is you lose control of your thoughts which leads evil spirits to attach themselves to you at which point you are at their mercy. 1 Peter 4 1 through 19 Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh and died for us, arm yourselves like warriors with the same purpose, being willing to suffer for doing what is right and pleasing God. Because whoever has suffered in the flesh, being like-minded with Christ, is done with intentional sin, having stopped pleasing the world, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living for human appetites and desires, but lives for the will and purpose of God. For the time already past is more than enough for doing what the unsaved Gentiles like to do, living unrestrained as you have done, in a course of shameless sensuality, lusts, drunkenness, carousing, drinking parties, and wanton idolatries. In connection with all this, they, the unbelievers, are resentful and surprised that you do not think like them, value their values, and run hand in hand with them into the same excesses of dis dissipation and immoral freedom, and they criticize and abuse and ridicule you and make fun of your values. But they will have, have to give an account to him who is ready to judge and pass sentence on the living and the dead. For this is why the good news of salvation was preached in their lifetimes, even to those who are dead, that though they were judged in the flesh as men are, they may live in the spirit according to the will and purpose of God. The end and culmination of all things is near. Therefore, be sound-minded and self-controlled for the purpose of prayer, staying balanced and focused on the things of God so that your communication will be clear, reasonable, specific, and pleasing to Him. Above all, have fervent and unfailing love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins, it overlooks unkindness, and unselfishly seeks the best for others. Be hospitable to one another without complaint, just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, and ability graciously given by God. Employ it in serving one another, as is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace, faithfully using the diverse, varied gifts and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. Whoever speaks to the congregation is to do so as one who speaks the oracles, utterances, the very words of God. Whoever serves the congregation is to do so as one who serves by the strength which God abundantly supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified, honored, and magnified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery, fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you, that is, to test the quality of your faith, as though something strange or unusual were happening to you. But insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, keep on rejoicing, so that when his glory, filled with his radiance and splendor, is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. If you are insulted and reviled for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed, happy, with life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation, regardless of your circumstances, because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and indwelling you. He whom they curse, you glorify. Make sure that none of you suffers as a murderer or a thief or any sort of criminal in response to persecution, or as a troublesome meddler interfering in the affairs of others. But if anyone suffers ill treatment as a Christian because of his belief, he is not to be ashamed but is to glorify God because he is considered worthy to suffer in this name. For it is the time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? And if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the godless and the sinner? Therefore, those who are ill-treated and suffer in accordance with the will of God must continue to do right and commit their souls for safekeeping to the faithful Creator. Proverbs 21-3 Wine is a mocker, strong drink a riotous brawler, and whoever is intoxicated by it is not wise. The terror of a king is like, a, like the roaring of a lion. Whoever provokes him to anger forfeits his own life. It is an honor for a man to keep away from strife by handling situations with thoughtful foresight, but any fool will start a quarrel without regard for the consequences. 2 Corinthians 13, 2-12 and 14 I have already warned those who have sinned in the past and all the rest as well, and I warn them now, even though I am absent from you, as I did when I was with you the second time, that if I come back I will not spare anyone, since you seek forensic proof that Christ is speaking in and through me. He is not weak or ineffective in dealing with you, but powerful within you. For even though he was crucified in weakness, yielding himself, yet he lives resurrected by the power of God his Father. 
For we too are weak in him, as he was humanly weak. Yet we are alive and well in fellowship with him because of the power of God directed toward you. Test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith and living your lives as committed believers. Examine yourselves, not me. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as counterfeit? But I hope that you will acknowledge that we do not fail the test nor are we to be rejected. But I pray to God that you may do nothing wrong, not so that we and our teaching may appear to be approved, but that you may continue doing what is right, even though we by comparison may seem to have failed. For we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth and the gospel, the good news of salvation. We are glad when we are weak, since God's power comes freely through us, but you by comparison are strong. We also pray for this, that you be made complete, fully restored, growing and maturing in godly character and spirit, pleasing your Heavenly Father by the life you live. For this reason I am writing these things while absent from you, so that when I come I will not need to deal severely with you in my use of the authority which the Lord has given me, to be used for building you up and not for tearing you down. Finally, believers, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. And the God of love and peace, the source of loving kindness, will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Remember, God will never leave nor forsake you. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus, so never give up and never give in. Victory is yours through Christ who strengthens you. And no weapons formed against you will ever prosper. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of sound mind and strength to trample on the lions, serpents, and all evil. 7-12-2023 Today God had me go to the Ogle County Sheriff's Department to drop off the summons so they could serve my sister the, the appearance for the order of protection against her, which they failed to do the previous two weeks. I told them about Sergeant White, who was laughing at me when I gave him the papers, as he said, we'll take care of it, while laughing with the other deputy. That was until I asked his name and he saw I was recording him. I told the secretary all of this, that I had it on video, as they did the same thing last year twice to me. She guaranteed me she would take care of this immediately. After I left there, God told me to go back home to work on other things that required my attention. And later on during the night, God told me to go to the gas station and pray for the clerk. So I did. My son came with me, but went into the bathroom as I was talking with the man. God had sent me to the same man just a couple days prior to soften him up by listening to his problems and telling him God and Jesus Christ love you and God bless you. Today I would be asking him if I could pray for him, to which he gladly agreed. As I was praying for him, he started to cry. I kept going with the prayer, and after I had finished, my son came walking up. The clerk then turned away, wiping the tears from his eyes so that no one but me could see what God had just done through his Holy Spirit, as most people are programmed not to show emotion as a weakness, which it is not. He thanked me profusely for the prayer, and I him for allowing me to provide this for him. When I got back to the car, my son asked what happened as I told him. Dylan then said, a lot of people cry and hug you after you pray for them. I told him the reason for this is God's Holy Spirit is being received by them in the words God is allowing me to say to them. It is the Holy Spirit who allows the receiver to hear exactly what God is trying to say to them in the meaning of how they are receiving the words from the Holy Spirit. People can pray for the same person, the same prayer, and the recipient not be moved by what they have said due to the sender not having been convicted by the Holy Spirit of God. This is the same case as those who say they know religion, go to church, and believe in God and Jesus Christ, but yet do not know them because they are not living in God's will for their lives. Rather, they are living in this world having believed, believed what their religious leaders have lied to them about. Remember, God and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, are not a religion, they are a relationship, and the only way of living with the promise of eternal life. Acts 2017 through 38 However, from Miletus, he sent word to Ephesus and summoned the elders of the church to meet him there. And when they arrived, he said to them, You know well how I lived when I was with you from the first day that I set foot in Asia until now, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears and trials which came on me because of the plots of the Jews against me. You know how I did not shrink back in fear from telling you anything that was for your benefit or from teaching you from teaching you in public meetings, and from house to house, solemnly and wholeheartedly testifying to both Jews and Greeks, urging them to turn in repentance to God and to have faith 
in our Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. And now compelled by the Spirit and obligated by my convictions, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit solemnly and emphatically affirms to me in the city after city that imprisonment and suffering await me. But I do not consider my life as something of value or dear to me, so that I may with joy finish my course and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus, to testify faithfully of the good news of God's precious undeserved grace, which makes us free of the guilt of sin and grants us eternal life. And now listen carefully. I know that none of you among whom I went about preaching for the kingdom will see me again. For that reason I testify to you on this, our parting day, that I am innocent of the blood of all people. For I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole purpose and plan of God. Take care and be on guard for yourselves and for the holy flock over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as overseers to shepherd, tend, feed, guide the church of God which he brought, bought with his own blood. I know that after I am gone, false teachers like ferocious wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, even from among your own selves men will arise, speaking perverse and distorted things, to draw away the disciples after themselves as their followers. Therefore, be continually alert, remembering that for three years, night or day, I did not stop admonishing and advising each one of you with tears, and now I commend you to God, placing you in his protective loving care, and I commend you to the word of your of his grace, the counsel and promises of his unmerited favor. His grace is able to build you up and to give you the rightful inheritance among all those who are sanctified, that is, among those who are set apart as God's purpose, all believers. I had no desire for anyone's silver or gold or expensive clothes. You know personally that these hands ministered to my own needs, working in manual labor and to those of the people who were with me. In everything I showed you by example that by working hard in this way, you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he himself said, It is more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. When he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they began to weep openly and threw their arms around Paul's neck and repeatedly kissed him, grieving and distressed, especially over the word which he had spoken, that they would not see him again, and they accompanied him to the ship. 7.13.2023 Today God had me go to Rockford, Illinois to go take the drug test for the job he lined up for me. He told me not to use GPS to find the testing center. Instead, listen to his GPS to get me there. As I drove, God told me when and where to turn, and when I looked up, I was in front of the very place I had to go. This is the power of God. When you listen to him, obey his commands, live in his will for your life by following his commands, laws, ways, will, words, and truth, you always get to where he is leading you, guiding and teaching you without fail. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize Him, and He will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. While I was there, I asked God what His will for me was while I waited for the nurse to come get me. God told me to open up my TikTok. When I did, the video that played was scriptures and how to obey God. The lady sitting across from me said, I love those videos. They are short, but packed full of information. I told her, yes, they definitely are, and they are great for us to share with the world so they can, too can know. She agreed. Just then the nurse came to get me, so I told her to have a great day and God bless you. While the nurse was getting everything wrapped up, I asked her if I could pray for her, and she agreed. After we had finished, she was fighting back tears, telling me it was her birthday and that this was by far the best gift she could have received from a stranger. We then talked about her life and how God had come into it, changing everything. She told me she would be going about her daily life. Out of nowhere, she would start praying or reading scriptures for no reason. I told her that there is a, always a reason. Nothing happens by chance, and that it is the Holy Spirit inside of her convicting her to pray and read the Bible. As I, ex as I was explaining things to her, she would bring up scriptures that God was about to have me say to her, which caused me to start to cry. She was so very comforting that I'm trying to hold back tears as I type this. She said, oh baby, don't cry. It's okay. I told her, no, these are tears of joy, as this makes me so very overjoyed to see others with God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and them working through them. We gave each other the biggest, warmest hug that I've had in a while, as I told her God's hand is on her life for sure. After this, I went back out to the waiting room to leave, as the same lady from earlier was still sitting there. I kneeled down before her, then asked if I could pray for her. She agreed, and after we had finished, 
After I finished, we had a wonderful heartfelt talk about her life. I reassured her that God has her and to always rely and lean on God and Jesus Christ for everything. I then told her if she does this, everything will work out just as they have planned for her good. Then I left for my mom's house. 2 Corinthians 13.11 Finally, believers, rejoice. Be made complete. Be what you should be. Be comforted. Be like-minded. Live in peace. Enjoy the spiritual well-being experienced by believers who walk closely with God. And the God of love and peace, the source of love and kindness, will be with you. Ecclesiastes 3.1 there is a reason, there is a season, a time appointed for everything, and a time and for every delight and event or purpose under heaven. Once at my mom's, I went downstairs to her room as she was on the phone with the DoorDash customer service. She had just finished up going through all of the fraudulent charges on her account that the evildoers in this world had taken from her. They do this to put you in fear, intimidate you, make you filled with anger and rage to derail you from your path with God. Do not ever let anything affect your perfect peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God. Instead, give everything you are feeling, going through, and all requests to them. Leave it all at their feet. They will not only carry it, but also destroy it and renew you in them and their promises to you for your eternal life in their kingdom. The DoorDash employee told her that if she uses it again to immediately remove the card, as it automatically saves to the app and site. While she was finishing up talking with this gentleman, she handed me the bank statement with almost $700 of fraudulent charges in the past month, most of which had been made after she reserved the U-Haul so that she could not attain it. Even though all these things came against her, she did not let it bother her or her path with God. Proverbs 31, 17, and 18. She equips herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task and makes her arms strong. She sees that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out, but it burns continually through the night. She is prepared for whatever lies ahead. Isaiah 41, 10 through 13. Do not fear anything, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Be assured I will help you. I will certainly take hold of you with my righteous right hand, a hand of justice, of power, of victory, of salvation. Indeed, all those who are angry with you will be put to shame and humiliated. Those who strive against you will be as nothing and will perish. You shall search for those who quarrel with you, but you will not find them. They who war against you will be as nothing, as nothing at all. For I, the Lord your God, keep hold of your right hand. I am the Lord, who says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. After this, we said our goodbyes, hugged, then I left for home. On the way, the evildoers ramped up their vehicular intimidation, thinking it was going to subdue me, including an Ogle County Sheriff's deputy. But you know me well enough by now to realize it only ever emboldens me. When I got home, my son and I had a very tense discussion as he felt that I do not have his best interest at heart. He had gone with my friend to get some groceries for his neighbor as she could not get around very well. While he was out, he had Sean take him to his grandpa's house on his mom's side of his family. They have not seen, contacted him, or even acknowledged his birthday for six years. He then started to blame me for everything wrong in his life. I reminded him that it was only I who had looked out for him while his stepdad had abused him. His mom had lied for him so he would not go to jail, and the last time he saw his grandpa is because he had been missing him, so I called him to come see Dylan. This was the last time he had seen him except for when he was helping his aunt move in across the street from us, and Dylan just happened to see him. Then he had to go talk to his grandpa just to talk with him. This is what evil people do. They get into the heads of those who are with God, spilling lies, trying to deceive, destroy, and divide with the lies of Satan. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Proverbs 6.12-23 A worthless person, a wicked man, is one who walks with a perverse, corrupt, vulgar mouth, who winks with his eyes in mockery, who shuffles his feet to signal, who points with his fingers to give subversive instructive instruction, who perversely in his heart plots trouble and evil continually, who spreads discord and strife. Therefore, the crushing weight of his disaster will come suddenly upon him. Instantly he will be broken, and there will be no healing or remedy, because he has no heart for God. These six things the Lord hates, indeed seven are repulsive to him. A proud look, the attitude that makes one overestimate oneself and discount others, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that creates wicked plans, feet that run swiftly to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, even half-truths, and one who spreads discord, rumors among brothers. My son, be guided by your father's God-given commandment, instruction, 
and do not reject the teaching of your mother. Bind them continually upon your heart in your thoughts, and tie them around your neck. When you walk about, they, the godly teachings of your parents, will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you, and when you awake, they will talk to you. For the commandment is a lamp, and the teaching of the law is light, and reproofs, rebukes, for discipline are the way of life. After this, I went downstairs to talk with God about what I should do. God told me yet again that I had to let him go, so I asked him if he wanted me to let Dylan go live with someone else. My father then told me, No, my son, let him go to be led by me just as you were and are. You are driving him away because my Holy Spirit that resides in both of you are fighting each other because everyone's path is different. You cannot keep trying to pull people with you as you are not on the same path or level as they are. Everyone has a different time frame for my process and path for them. I then went back outside to talk with my son, telling him what I had just been told. I would no longer be telling him anything of God unless he comes to ask. I would only give him advice when he asked for it, that I had to let him go knowing that God and Jesus Christ have him and everyone else on the path they need to take with them. That he who started a good work in you shall never leave until that work is complete. Ecclesiastes 7, 15-23 I have seen everything during my fleeting days of futility. There is a righteous man who perishes in spite of his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who lives a long life in spite of his wickedness. Do not be excessively righteous like those given to self-conceit, and do not be overly wise, pretentious. Why should you bring yourself to ruin? Do not be excessively or willfully wicked, and do not be a fool. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you take hold of one thing, righteousness, and also not let go of the other, wisdom. For the one who fears and worships God with awe-filled reverence will come forth with both of them. Wisdom strengthens the wise man more than ten rulers who are in his city. Indeed, there is not a righteous man on earth who always does good and who never sins. Also, do not take seriously everything that is said, so that you will not hear your servant cursing you. For you also know that you too have cursed others many times. I have tested all this with wisdom, I said. I will be wise, independently of God, but true wisdom was far from me. Later in the evening, my friend came outside and asked me to pray for his uncle, who was going through a very rough time. He is in the hospital. Both his legs are black, as he also has diabetes, and he is unable to talk now. I happily agreed to this, as we prayed, he was crying as I fought back my tears. After this, he apologized for what he said to me the night before. I explained to him that I needed not to push as hard as I did, and the reason he fought back against it was due to his intoxication, which allowed the evil spirit to take control of him. He finally understood. He agreed with me, then put it into these very succinct words. It's because when you are intoxicated, you have lost control of yourself, which is why we are so easily taken over and unable to stop it from happening. To which I said, Be of sober mind and do not give the devil a foothold. That enemy of yours, Satan, walks around like a roaring lion, looking for anything to kill, deceive, steal, and destroy. After this, we all went to my room to watch a movie before calling it a night. 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 16 If I shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence and plague among my people, and my people, who are called by my name, humble themselves, and pray and seek, crave, require as a necessity my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven, and forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to prayer offered in this place. For now I have chosen, and sanctified, and set apart for my purpose this house, that my name may be here forever, and my eyes and my heart will be here perpetually. 7-14-2023 Today God had me go to Dixon, Illinois to apply for some jobs while I wait to start my new job in a few weeks. Of course, the evildoers still believe they can affect me in some sort of way for their benefit, but as I always say, it only emboldens me. God had me pull into a gas station and wait in the van until he told me to go pray for one of them who was trying to intimidate me. Much to my surprise, it was a Lee County Sheriff's deputy. I got out and walked over to him as he nervously looked at me then asked if everything was okay. I told him, everything is always perfect. I just came over to you to ask if I could pray for you. He eagerly agreed. As I prayed for him, I could feel his, his body shaking while I held his hands. When I finished, he thanked me and said, God bless you. I left there to go about my father's business for the day, applying at various businesses he told me to. 
while praying for people along the way. As my son, dog, and I left Dixon to go back to Mount Morris, the same deputy was pulled off to the side of the road, unable to look at me as we drove by, as he was told to sit there to intimidate me again. However, he did wave at me, letting me know he was appreciative of what I had done for him. Therefore, confess, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another, that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. 1 John 1, 5 through 10 This is the message of God's promised revelation, which we have heard from him and now announce to you that God is light. He is holy. His message is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness, and in him there is no darkness at all, no sin, no wickedness, no imperfection. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness of sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we really walk in the light, that is, live each and every day in conformity with his precepts of God, as he himself is in the light, we have true, unbroken fellowship with one another, he with us and we with him. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin by erasing the stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. If we say we have no sin, refusing to admit that we are sinners, we delude ourselves, and the truth is not in us. His word does not live in our hearts if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins. He is faithful and just, true to his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. If we say that we have not sinned, refusing to admit acts of sin, we make him out to be a liar by contradicting him, and his word is not in us. James 5.16 Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. 7-15-2023 Today I went with Sean's mom to Sterling, Illinois to the food pantry. As we drove there, we talked about her son's addiction to alcohol that will kill him shall he not give it to God. We had a very productive conversation concerning this and came to God's plan for him to overcome this. When we arrived at the food pantry, there were vehicles lined up an hour earlier than they opened, showing the great need in this world. We talked about various subjects, including her family history, the history of Oregon, Illinois, becoming one town rather than Oregon and East Oregon, which was a township and not a part of Oregon at that time, amongst many other subjects. We talked for 30 to 40 minutes before I got out to have a cigarette, at which point an elderly gentleman in the van next to us came to the back of his van so that I could pray for him. While I saw him rummaging through his van, I noticed that his nose was running due to him trying to hold back his back tears waiting for me to engage him in conversation. It was at this moment that God told me to pray for him, so I did. He gladly accepted my request. When I had finished my prayer, I went to let go of his hands, but he held on tightly, then started praying for me as well. I bowed my head, then he put his head on mine as he prayed for me. This was quite unexpected, as almost everyone I pray for does not offer the same to me. When he had finished, we continued to talk, then gave each other a big warm hug. After this, the lady behind him put her head out the window, telling us she was praying with us as well, even though she could not hear our conversation. The gentleman and I approached her as she got out of her car. She started to tell us she was almost in tears as he and I prayed together. I asked her if she would like me to pray for her as well, as she happily accepted. All three of us joined hands as I prayed for her. Then the gentleman prayed for her, and she prayed for both of us when he, he had finished. We hugged, then the gentleman went back to his van as she asked what church I went to. I told her, I do not go to church. God is who teaches, leads, and guides me. She responded, Well, the Bible says we need to be in church to give and receive support. I replied, Actually, the Bible says we are to be around like-minded people who are the true church, not a church itself. I tried telling her that for the most part churches are dead and teaching incorrect doctrines, but if she feels that she is at the right place, then she needs to discern what is being preached so she isn't led astray. I told her anything she hears or reads needs to be evaluated and to only take what is meant for her from God, not man. She asked if I am a pastor. I replied, from God, not man. Man does not appoint man to preach. Only God does this. As we were talking, she pointed out a helicopter flying extremely low, heading directly over top of us. 
This was the evildoers in this world, of which she is a part of, as she was trying, just as the rest of them, to get me to join their church, whereby foregoing God's plan and purpose for my life and his kingdom. The entire time I was talking with her and the older gentleman, God was there as an eagle flying over us. Then as the helicopter came, stayed directly underneath it. God shows me this quite often, that I am on the right path when I am traveling with eagles, hawks, and falcons. But just as I told you before, they do not scare, intimidate, or bother me. They only serve to show me I am doing exactly what my Father has planned for me, which always emboldens me. When we left the food pantry, God told me to stop at the same gas station as I did the other day. This was to pray for the cashier, who reluctantly accepted, but was very happy, and graciously said, God bless you. Thank you very much for this, as, and thank you very much for this. As I thanked her for allowing me to. Then we left for home. As we continued to talk, I learned a great deal more about Deb and her family history. I was so very happy to have spent this time with her, as I have known her since I was five years old, without ever having known much about her. Before we got out of the van, I told her this as she gave me a great big smile with an astonished look on her face. I asked her if what I said struck her as odd. She said, yes, I have never been told that by anyone before, but it is a good thing to, to have heard you say. As I exited the van to have a smoke before getting the groceries, Sean and George, his dad, were outside. They took care of all the groceries while I finished my cigarette. Then I went inside as Deb told Sean we were going to get him into a rehab if he did not accept it. We would have to do something else. At which point he looked at her then said, You do not have to do that. I am done with all this BS I have been living in. I am tired of it all. I cannot do it anymore. I cannot do it to you guys anymore either. She looked at him then said, You have told everyone these things before. He replied, I know I have, Mom, but this time I am promising you I am not drinking anymore. When Deb told me this, she said he had never promised her this before. He had with other people, but never her. She told me yesterday he asked to borrow her car, and she told him, No, you will never drive my car again. You are a drunk driver, and I cannot trust you with anything anymore. She then said he looked at her with a puzzled look on his face, not knowing what to say to her. This must have resonated with him very deeply while he spent most of his time after this in his room, contemplating everything he has done, everything I have told him, as well as his family, and the fact that he did these things while driving my son around the other day. My son found the travel-sized bottle of vodka he drank while Dylan wasn't looking under his seat, to which he questioned Sean on it. Sean gave him a lie that Dylan then went to the person Sean blamed it on to verify it was not hers. She told my son that she does not drink, that it was not hers, and had to be Sean's as he uses her car to run errands for her. Then I asked God if this time Sean was going to hold true to his promise. God told me this time Sean had been brought low enough to follow through with his promise. My son took Sean golfing today, showing him just how much people care for him, how much we want him to be with the man of God, the man God has made him to be. I gave him the keys to my van, telling him he can drive it if he does not drink. He said, I promise you that is over now. God and Jesus Christ are all-powerful, and their ways are completely unfathomable to man. All praise and glory to God and Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior for absolutely everything as they alone are deserving of it all, and so much more than anyone can ever truly give to them. Psalms 105.3 Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek and require the Lord, and as their most essential need, rejoice. Psalms 118.7 The Lord is on my side. He is among those who help me. Therefore I will look in triumph on those who hate me. Hebrew, Hebrews 2.18 Because he himself, in his humanity, has suffered in being tempted, he is able to help and provide immediate assistance to those who are being tempted and exposed to suffering. Matthew 9.13 Go and learn what this scripture means. I desire compassion for those in distress, and not animal sacrifice, for I did not come to call to repentance the self-proclaimed righteous, who see no need to change, but sinners, those who recognize their sin and actively seek forgiveness. Hebrews 4.16 Therefore, let us with privilege approach the throne of grace, that is, the throne of God's gracious favor, with confidence and without fear, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find his amazing grace to help in time of need, an appropriate blessing coming just at the right moment. Acts 20.35 And everything I showed you by example, that by working hard in this way, 
you must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he himself said, It is more blessed and brings greater joy to give than to receive. Proverbs 3.27 Do not withhold good from those who, to whom it is due, its rightful recipients, when it is in your power to do it. Psalms 72.12-15 For he will rescue the needy when he cries for help, the afflicted and abused also, and him who has no helper, he will have compassion on the poor and needy, and he will save the lives of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression and fraud and violence, and their blood will be precious in his sight. So may he live, and may the gold of Sheba be given to him, and let them pray for him continually. Let them bless and praise him all day long. 1 Corinthians 6.12 Everything is permissible for me, but not all things are beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under its power, allowing it to control me. Philippians 4.8-9 Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things, center them on your mind, and implant them in your heart. The things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in daily life, and God and the God who is the source of peace and well-being, will be with you. Mark 11.25 When you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Drop the issue, let it go, so that your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your transgressions and wrongdoings against him and others. Proverbs 24.14 Know that skillful and godly wisdom is so very good for your life and soul. If you find wisdom, then there will be a future and a reward, and your hope and expectation will not be cut off. Remember, God will never leave nor forsake you, shall you abide in his commands, laws, ways, will, words, and truth. So never give up, never give in. You are more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus who strengthens you. Victory is yours through God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and no weapons formed against you shall ever prosper against your eternal life in their kingdom.